For Japanese people, earthquakes are a part of life. Japan experiences over 2,000 earthquakes a year, which is about the most in the world. It is home to the world's busiest seismic activity. While the majority of Japan's earthquakes are so minor that nobody notices, they are occasionally significant quakes that happen to shake the mainland. In some extreme cases, severe earthquakes can wreak havoc on Japan and its people. Japan has suffered some of the world's most damaging earthquakes over the past hundred years. So why does Japan have so many earthquakes? What is it about Japan's geographical location that makes it so prone to seismic activity? Well, it, uh, it all starts with the Circum-Pacific Belt, or its more dramatic name, the Pacific Ring of Fire. This is a 40,000 kilometer horseshoe-shaped trail that stretches around the Pacific Ocean. The Pacific Ring contains about 450 volcanoes, which is over 75% of the world's total. Over 260 of these lie in Japan. The ring starts in the southwest from New Zealand and winds right up through Indonesia, directly under Japan. And then it veers east to Alaska and then runs all the way down the north and South American west coast. Yeah. 90% of the world's earthquakes occur within this Pacific Ring of Fire. Within the Pacific Ring are four of the world's seven tectonic plates. And Japan sits right on top of all of them. So you might say that Japan is perfectly situated as a recipient of earthquakes. Japan lies either near or directly over the Pacific, North American, Eurasian, and the Filipino tectonic plates. The Pacific plate broadly covers the southeastern region, encompassing South America and New Zealand. The Filipino plate branches out from Southeast Asia and meets the Eurasian plate, which spans across the northwestern Japan. The North American plate lies near Alaska and down the American west coast. Not surprisingly, countries within this ring of fire are often susceptible to, you guessed it, earthquakes and tsunamis. Japan, China, Indonesia, Peru, Chile, and the US, oh yeah, and New Zealand, all record regular quakes and tremors, and sometimes they suffer serious and deadly earthquakes. The Earth's surface, or crust, is composed of thick tectonic plates, not unlike a jigsaw puzzle. These plates vary in thickness from 50 to 125 kilometers. Oceanic plates, such as those surrounding Japan, tend to be less thick rating from 50 to 100 kilometers in size. These tectonic plates are a... They're in a state of constant movement due to the natural movement of the Earth. Movement is small, usually only a few centimeters per year, but the movement is constant. The plates move in different directions and at different speeds. However, when they come together, the repercussions can often be felt on land. When two plates converge, they can become locked. This area is known as the fault line. When the plates are locked together and shifting, a tremendous amount of stress is created. When the Earth's faults can no longer withhold the extreme friction from the plates, a seismic shock is released, resulting in an earthquake. If this happens to take place under the ocean, it can lead to a tsunami. Japan is in the unique position of sitting atop several plates. Underneath the main island of Honshu are the Pacific, Indonesian, and Eurasian plates, forming what is called a triple junction. Plates are jostling with each other, and they move freely, and then the ensuing locking and the tension results in regular release of seismic energy, causing earthquakes. The population of Kanto sits directly on top of these shifting plates. Kanto accounts for the mass urban area of Tokyo, Yokohama, and Saitama that are approximately holding of 45 million people. Small tremors are they're, they're regular occurrences in Japan's, and also in similar regions in the, inside that Pacific Ring. However, because Japan sits atop several constantly moving plates, the tremors are far more frequent. The magnitude of an earthquake and ensuing intensity depends on several factors. For example, how far below the Earth's surface the plate activity. Plate activity can range from 25 to 800 kilometers beneath the surface. The size of the plates involved and the intensity of them coming together are also very crucial in determining how big that earthquake is going to be. Small earthquake measuring 1 or 2 magnitude usually go unnoticed. People usually notice a slight shaking from earthquakes from 3 to 4 in the magnitude range, but these quakes can... they're, they're, they're very minor. They tend, tend to cause very minimal damage. When earthquakes become stronger and they enter that 5 to 6 zone, small damage can occur to less stable buildings and structures. It's when earthquakes measure over 7 that things become really serious. The Great Kanto Earthquake in 1923 measured an 8 on the Richter scale and killed about 140,000 people. In 1995, the Great Hanshin Earthquake was similarly devastating, with a magnitude of 7 and taking over 6,000 lives. More recently was the massive 2011 Tohoku Earthquake, which also resulted in a tsunami. 
The 2011 earthquake recorded a whopping nine magnitude, killing 20,000 people, destroying thousands of homes, and damaging a nuclear reactor. It was a subduction earthquake, which is the most severe of all. Subduction earthquakes occur when, instead of two plates bumping against one another, the heavier plate sinks under the lighter plate and into the Earth's crust. The gap caused by this subduction creates a huge fault, which obviously means a much bigger explosion of seismic energy. These earthquakes can also cause enormous tsunamis, and they're usually recorded at around a magnitude of 9, which is as serious as it can get. Understandably, Japan is seriously concerned about the likelihood of another earthquake if it's in the epicenter, uh, such a heavily populated area, maybe like Tokyo. If you visit Tokyo and you head for the lookout towers in Shinjuku, you'll be gobsmacked by the vast, never-ending sea of skyscrapers and towers. For an area where earthquakes are so prevalent, it seems a, a little questionable to live in such a built-up area. But, you know, it, it's in its typically pragmatic fashion, Japan tends to build its cities with purpose, with safety always in mind. Since the horrific 1995 earthquake that hit Kobe, Japan started to rethink how it constructs its building. Specifically, the goal was to build structures that could not only withstand serious earthquakes, but could also be used safe for use following the earthquakes and aftershocks. Japan began using a process known as base isolation, which aims to keep tall structures from shaking as little as possible. A building's foundation rests on rubber-like pads that act as shock absorbers in case of an earthquake. From the ground up to the top, motion dampers are also installed. Motion dampers reduce the vibrations throughout a building. Coupled with shock-absorbent bases, Japanese buildings are less likely to shake during an earthquake, with the aim of beginning to suffer as little damage as possible to allow future use. The guidelines and regulations are strictly enforced throughout the country, from small apartment buildings to towering structures in major cities. All Japanese phones are equipped with a pre-earthquake warning signal. It alerts people within a predicted danger zone of up to 15 seconds before an earthquake occurs, giving them at least a small window to escape to the nearest safe area. Japan has long ago accepted its circumstances, and it's simply done all that it can to prepare for large earthquakes. The people are resolute and are probably the world's best informed regarding what to do in an earthquake and what not to do. While another big quake seems inevitable one day, the Japanese people aren't stopping to worry. They're too busy working and, I mean, getting on with life.